What's up? I'm in the second part. First and foremost, I'm just gonna get straight into the dream, right? Uh, because I only have a good 20 minutes at most, maybe half an hour. I have 20 minutes minimum uh, and half an hour tops to explain what in the world I'm seeing. This cousin that I labored at length and bina, being all jokos uh, in the previous part, well, like it's really quite deep and it's dire. And I've been dreaming about her quite a lot. And I am pretty certain that she's facing imminent death. From what the law showed me, it's gonna be sudden. And guys, or she listens to my content, uh, like. I, I, and the thing about my cousin's witchcraft is that she's so desperate that she's no longer practicing in her own capacity because she recognizes that I'm strong she is similar to this guy in the US all right this monster from America that came into my life was both a self-practicing voodoo priest voodoo practitioner I can't call him a priest he wasn't at that level I apologize there is a speech lag now in this part guys um it is what it is, you know, I'm, I'm dealing with these issues, but anyway, whatever. This guy did voodoo in his own personal capacity. I don't know where he learned it, who introduced him to it, whether he was watching YouTube tutorials. And so he experimented on his own, but he definitely was self-practicing. Uh, he also learned a couple of things from some cult he joined. And uh, over and above it, uh, yeah, he learned some things from a cult he joined, practiced in his own capacity. But upon realizing how strong I am because of my Christianity, they have no regard for Christ. They just think that we are, you know, a, a stronger force to battle with but nonetheless one that can be conquered insofar as you invest in enough lofty sorcery they think that christianity or the powers the weapons of our warfare that are not carnal but are mighty in god for the pulling down of strongholds they imagine them as ones with them upon entering into a battlefield are of equal potency they think that our weapons and theirs anyone could win they think it's just a matter of who has got the grandest staying power or who's got better military efficacy who is a stronger soldier who has been given better training yeah and so really based on your longevity based on your super strength you can conquer a christian ultimately no guys allow me to put this like correction out there whenever you make war with a christian you are not on equal playing ground with that christian in any and this battle could go in any direction you are not an individual that is fighting yet another soldier but belonging to an opposite army and anyone could win you are literally done with before it even starts it's over before it even starts for the one who is not the believer the kingdom of heaven might suffer violence and violent and the violent take it by force the violent of which would of, of which might would describe us the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take it by force okay we take the kingdom of heaven by force indeed uh but even that forcefulness with which we take the kingdom of heaven back you must comprehend thoroughly is only because of the embarrassingly coercive persistence of our opposing armies they just keep on fostering and so we then have to rip our inheritance out of their hands in a war that has already been won on our behalf but nonetheless we go to battle because you know the judgment begins with the church of the lord jesus christ and this earth is the, the the bible writes that the devil is the god of this world small g and so given that the devil has been given certain permissions to roam these streets we have got to wear full armor otherwise it would be over before it starts like the moment you get born again ain't nobody would be able to touch you you'd be like a meta human with such inc incredible potent powers that everybody would be scared of you warding away from you but the lord has allowed the human race to be given an option will basically sentiency what, what do they call this thing free agency to either choose god or to like carry on basically working for the devil just as he gave adam and eve free agency to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil but gave them counsel not to do so otherwise they will surely die it is to make sure that he doesn't have for himself a whole bunch of robots at the end of um the ages that could not do anything but choose him so those who ultimately end up with god have been trained they have been chiseled in basically battle and combat band in displaying that they insist on staying with God they insist because they want him but if you just la di da lackadaisically just capitulate to the devil on that day God is not gonna block you he's not gonna stop you he's not gonna force you to stay with him because then who in the world under heaven is happy in a marriage with a man that forced him to stay you want to come back upon there being a great case being made for the person in question begging for you to stay if at all you stay because they made a good case then on that day you are trustworthy to stick around but if you are made to stay in God, all different kinds of nuts and balls and like doors shut with uh, like some impregnable structures 
you are a prisoner on that day and not truly a servant are you you are not a doting loving willing uh son you are a captor so god is not actually trying to capture us by force into heaven he is giving us an option do you understand therefore he gave the devil this world to rule and reign and do whatever under heaven it is that is a nasty thing that he's doing actually in these streets and upon doing this thing he is able to deceive the masses but you see the bible says that it is because of not loving the truth and taking pleasure in unrighteousness that people are handed over to a reprobate mind because they not only know that what it is that they're doing according to romans 1 i apologize for my speech lag i this phone yes and they not only know that what they're doing is evil okay they not only know that what they're doing is evil and that those who do such things deserve death not only continue doing them but they also inspire others to do them so human beings with their consciences and the invisible qualities of god basically know what is the right thing to do they're aware of what is the better way to go they consciences beat on them telling them i would much rather uh, not do go out like that but then these people insist on capitulating to their to, to, to their slavery to sin uh, so therefore what, what is this uh upon them choosing usatani they are like ones who have been told thoroughly by god do not eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and they choose to eat anyway even though they know that it is wrong that it deserves death but they do it and also encourage others to do it so these are ones who not only love the truth and take pleasure in their unrighteousness but they deceive others in also being deceived they gather for themselves a whole horde of supporters so as to eradicate or ease their guilt their consciences that beat on them they comfort them by gathering for themselves crowds of support and so they they basically just grow in fever against the lord and then gather for themselves a great number of teachers also to continue to help them along in that doctrine otherwise known as teaching them what the itching is wanted to hear they have not loved the truth they have departed from the faith and taken heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of demons the lord has allowed the god of this world who is the devil to do that to them to deceive them knowing however that he has given them his invisible qualities alongside their consciences their guilt what they know is right the law of god written on their hearts but them disregarding it when they disregard it for long enough he then hands them over to their reprobate mind so they will not love the truth take pleasure in that unrighteousness and he will send them a strong delusion so they will continue to follow after myths and in the last days that's like a whole entire epidemic so all of these people all over the show uh well, what is this like like my cousin continuing in their filth in their dirt in in, in, the, in the girth of their irresponsibility against their own souls they're doing so knowing that not only what are they doing deserving deserve death but they also gather a whole bunch of people around them in support and to also encourage them to do that this cousin of mine trained her sister witchcraft uh this cousin of mine also has uh, inducted or recruited a few of her friends into this evil stuff they love to get for themselves other like you know supporters of miscreants to do this thing and when so far as they imagine that there is safety in numbers they continue in this regard and that's why god says that one you know the people in the last days are going to be saying peace and security peace and security and then suddenly calamity will overcome them the only reason why they're able to say peace and security is because they've gathered for themselves a whole bunch of people that also believe in the peace and the security as being fostered even though they're walking in evil even though they have approved and made legal therefore within a systematic space that which is utterly abominable and was at some point in history abominable also to them but now they have basically loosened their morals right that's what's going on with the planet around us therefore when these people are met with sudden death it is actually not that sudden it's not that sudden the bible says i once saw a wicked and an immoral man spreading himself like a green laurel tree and then one day you looked for him and he suddenly disappeared the wicked are driven away by the chaff they cannot stand in the congregation with the righteous they cannot be in the same environment as us because we have heeded our consciences and embraced the lord while they have completely ignored them therefore when a wicked person suddenly gets overcome by destruction it is not actually truly sudden why because the lord god almighty says that he is slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love not any not willing that anybody should perish but that all should come to a knowledge of him he gives everybody ample warning he gives everybody ample evidence of his existence he gives everybody understanding in advance and it tends to be a long suffering amount of time the lord tends to have let them know well in advance what in the world is coming to them my cousin has been listening to my content on a loop because the lord keeps on drawing her back here and yet she keeps on going back to the drawing board doing witchcraft this woman has not only known that what she's doing is evil and deserves death but she has recruited more people into it and now at the very end of her life god has also made her listen to a christian on a loop almost every single day 
and she is still going back to the drawing board to do witchcraft. Therefore, when she suddenly gets into some kind of cataclysmic life-ending event, I don't know what it is, I don't know if it's a car accident or what, but from what I understood, it is a sudden death that my cousin is going to endure. She will have been given ample warning, even though she will only be a woman that's just 39 years old because we're the exact same age, or maybe 40. This is something that is coming. Her birthday is in February, whereas mine is in August, so she turns 40 before me. It will nonetheless, even though she's a young woman, essentially, she's like still young. There's still a lot of like juice left to her steam that she can still live out. It will nonetheless not be considered a sudden death in the real sense of the word because she will have been given ample opportunity to understand what is coming. She will have been given her own conscience, the invisible qualities, her own knowledge of her wickedness, however, taking pleasure in her unrighteousness. Plus, like I said, she will have taken a front or she would have, she would have been given front row seats to a Christian rapping on on the rooftops, trying to snatch her from the flames of hell for weeks in the run up to her uh, passing and when she enters into eternity it'll all just be a perspective that she gauges her family will see it as a sudden death but according to god he will have suffered her long enough he the wine press of his wrath will have reached a height where she is concerned that's what the wicked do to themselves the god of this world who is the devil deceives them and they run with what he deceives them concerning and witchcraft is this like seemly comely carrot that is dangled before people's faces to give them ill-gotten gain that is also um really quickly acquired so there's no need to wait it is instant gratification that is what makes it so comely so ornate so shiny and upon them instantly getting what it is that they want do you understand what i'm saying um again they then trust him they run with him even though they know that this stuff is evil just last night i was thinking about some dude that i was once upon a time voluminously in love with at mtn that drew me to christ but then he got lured away uh, from from jesus and i eventually got over this guy and all i could think about was how do you sit around in the church and how do you read the bible how do you hang with christ for so long and be so and uh, like basically enamored besotted with him and know him and this what is this what, what i want to say is understand what he expects of you how do you sit around in a church and then one day out of frustration from waiting around too long to get what you want in life then go and visit a sangoma how can you do that with any level of clarity of conscience following seeing the sangoma of which then gaining success and prosperity instant gratification for what it is that you were looking for and then come back from that all i could think about is how, how do you come back from that how do you come back from being given what you call answered prayer by the devil where you imagine god failed how do you ever recover from that when are you ever going to trust god again when under heaven when you have gone on and cheated on waiting on god are you ever going to trust him for the next thing that you're waiting on him for are you not then going to when you meet a woman that you fall in love with going to slap her with gorobella because you don't trust god to lure her to you lovingly and longingly that same guy, I was out of my mind in love with him at some point. Recently, he just hooked up Gorobella to try and marry me, even after putting away his first wife. That's what's good. And all I could think about was that guy did not need Gorobella on me because I already had such strong feelings for him. I had such strong feelings for him that if he had, like, he, he, would, he would have still stumbled me despite having had another wife and me having conviction about divorce and remarriage. If that guy had just sent me an email and spoken to me, I would have been stumbled because I had strong feelings for him and feelings don't ever really die. You just, it's like out of sight, out of mind. Once you make a determination that you don't want to be with somebody or that you are letting something go, that is what enables you to be less turbulent in your heart emotionally concerning a person. But once that person decides to blossom like a flower, they can like literally drive you into their lives with a tsunami purely because you once had passions for them. So this guy did not need Corobella, but that's just the thing. When you, the first spell that you cast in order to get something real quick when you're calling yourself a Christian, it's going to give you an addiction to witchcraft because you are no longer going to trust in the providing power of God. You will no longer trust in the, uh, what is this? Mm, uh, what is this? That after suffering for a little while and patient endurance, God will give you everything you need lacking in nothing. You will never believe in long suffering and patience again because you gained instant gratification. And the thing that the devil tends to give these people after being, um, what is this? After struggling to wait on the Lord, it, 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 it doesn't come, it doesn't even come close to what the Lord would have given them. They are absent of knowledge or understanding as to what it is that God would have given them because they passed it up. They gave up, right? Before they could get it. However, whatever it is that the devil does ultimately give them, it looks so good. Given that they don't have anything else by which to measure it, they don't have a heavenly barometer to see that it's a loss. 
they don't have a heavenly barometer to see that it is a loss it appears so good that they now are like yo the devil gave me a job when i was unemployed for two years oh like goodness gracious it's like you literally you you are giving god's job to the devil where the devil has provided for you a job you you will never know what god would have given you and so the, the girth and the height of God's excellent provision. Every good and perfect gift is from above and from the Father of heavenly lights. That's what the Bible says. You never would have known. You don't know what you don't have, if you know what I'm saying. Mm. So how do you go from that to prodigal son, you repent, and now you are waiting on God for something else? How do you bounce back from the fact that the devil once provided for you when God apparently didn't? And you put yourself in a position of unbelief, unbelief. So all I could ask God was, how does somebody bounce back from that? How do you bring back such prodigal sons? People who went and dabbled with witchcraft and now they want you back. And the Lord was like, I use people like you. I use those who did wait. That guy went and trusted the devil for a job, got it, and it bolstered his career. Imagining that God cannot give him anything. In that bolstering state that he was in, he ended up working for a company that I worked for. He met me. I was in the process of getting saved. I got super saved. We were interacting with each other. There was chemistry. There was a lot of exchange between us. We obviously had feelings for each other, but he passed me up. Why? Because he was made blind. He could not see me. He could not see me because if at all he had the Holy Spirit truly, and if at all he was led by God, it would have been so easy for him to make a quick decision about me being his wife. Fast. He only found that out years after hurting me. He, with the horde of other miscreants, uh, persecuted me. He uh, participated in, uh, what is this, gossip slander about me, and then went on right ahead to cast spells on me once he discovered that I was truly godly, out of jealousy to try and make sure I don't get married. And now, all these years down the line, now that he has divorced the woman that he did finally marry, that he tried to gloat in my face he has come back being the cyber stalker that he's always been also having never ever stopped loving me and he can't stop watching my content and all he can think is she was it this was it why didn't i see it he didn't see it because god made him blind however he now sees what his compromise did it made him blind to what he was supposed to get so he stands a chance with god because now he sees basically he's like a monument an example do you understand now he sees what people potentially can lose when they don't trust god even though he would never have had a barometer by which to measure his old losses that he encountered, endured due to settling with the devil. He now is seeing what is good and how it can't be his. He now is seeing the good and the perfect gift that is from above and from the Father of Heavenly Lights that he cannot have. He has a wife that he did take and one that he passed up. This one came way after me and I am here and I am literally a cut above uh, them all the bible says many women have done excellently but she surpasses them all i surpass her so now he has a barometer me versus his wife except i'm not his and i never can be his and that is the sorrow of his soul that is the pain that he has so that's how you cause a prodigal son to come back home and next time when he wants something wait however long it takes because what you get from god is always going to be superior in comparison to anything the devil gives he is seeing that the devil gave him that girl and no, and, and uh, however if at all he had honored the lord the lord would have given him either me or a woman like me but he has lost me not only me but he's now wondering what job would i be working today if i did not go to a sangoma to ask for a job he underestimated the provision of god the lord brings these prodigals back home through people like me through christians who wait on him successfully they lose them so it's like negative reinforcement back into the kingdom of heaven the lord knows who are his he knows how to bring the righteous to himself so he knows how to bring prodigal sons back home but they put themselves in a position to be in disbelief in unbelief in faithlessness due to them allowing the devil to give them instant gratification and my cousin is that thing she has never ever really known god but she could not for the life of me when i got born again also join my jesus to see if the lord would not springboard her along and get her out of the the, the rut that she was in nah she chose satan i chose god i appeared to be gomorajo type setup thing but now she's making observations about the fact that there was so much comprehensiveness about me plus nothing has ever fallen apart plus i still stand a perfect future i still stand a perfect opportunity sorry to acquire a future while she has lost hers and her reputation is decimated so she is basically bearing the consequences of her actions but she's trying to finish herself off she's trying to finish herself off and this is going to hurt her something bad she has borne the consequences of her actions and she's still trying to finish what she started this guy in america was a self-practicing voodoo priest but then he ended up investing in a whole bunch of money a whole bunch of money in order to get at me and now all he can think about is 
uh, it, it, there was nothing in it for me. Well, what's the thing that he's saying for um, King? Uh, empty handed. He feels empty handed. Like he came out up empty handed because he did his own rituals, did rituals from his cult, did not work, ended up spending thousands of dollars on these devil worshippers all over the show to get stronger witchcraft against me. Because his people feel like they're on equal playing ground with us, but with the believer, it's over before it starts. The the battle is already won. Do you understand? It's just that they go to war with people who are naive enough to think they can fight the God of the universe, who are naive enough to think they can fight their own creator. And so Christians always decimate them. But we live in a world where the devil has deceived mindless drones, more of them than they are us. So they keep going to war with people they cannot ever win against, ever win against. And they uh, are found wanting on the other side, in the worst way, in the worst way. There's only one time in the history of the human race where uh, King and the devil is going to overcome the saints. And it's in the tribulation, but that's only because the Lord intends to come back with his second coming to fix that situation. Otherwise, in the run-up too, before the tribulation, we conquer every battle. Every battle, we win it. We win it. We win it. The devil is made is given authority to make war with the saints and to overcome them once in history and no other time. So to think that you can conquer a Christian by just hooking up more spells is naive. And this guy in the U.S., is his particular antics are my cousins the lord showed me in the kitchen earlier that she is wasting so much money she is spending a lot of money she is self-practicing there are spells she can do herself she also has a cult that she belongs to where she can do spells for free but she is paying what she imagines to be stronger uh, priests and priestesses stronger occult members to do spells against me that might stick because she imagines she just needs to like you know like hook up a stronger principality or a higher order demon or whatever to get to me but she's setting up gallows and that are gonna hang her they, she's gonna end up dying she's gonna die suddenly because god does not want me perpetually frustrated by stronger and stronger witchcraft do you understand that i have to keep on conquering making war with indeed we go to war we have to the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but i'm mighty in god and for the pulling down of strongholds but god does not want me in a constant battle that's the thing he does not want me so he's gonna just wipe her out because she's rebellious she's recalcitrant she is stubborn and forward and in her, that forward constitution thoughtfully imagines all along she hasn't managed well when they encounter somebody that is as strong as me in other words when they encounter christians that's when they waste a whole load of money and then next thing end up dying they waste money first and then they die this guy in the u.s is inevitably gonna die and from what i'm seeing about my cousin she's also facing death i don't know when but i will not even be at her funeral i guess bye skill him i guess bye i will have been given a reprieve from whatever under heaven she is doing so cousin do it stop spending money you're gonna die so hello senior chalateyabana yakeri stop wasting chalateyabana yeah university tuition the 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 the, the like in a life policy kyaoka investor in the children's uh, education and stop spending thousands of rands on witchcraft that is not going to do anything to me you are trying to finish me off you are trying to prevent me from doing what i did initially bouncing back even though you betrayed me this time around you know you can never get me back you you don't want to face the consequences of your actions honey it is better for you to face the music than for you to go to hell rather deal with the fact that garabo is always going to be this thing that you're going to be watching from a distance in the shadows having betrayed her and you are now this loose cannon freak that everybody is looking at as oh you are garabo's attempted murderer rather take that in your stride than hellfire because that is permanent that is eternal and from that you're going to want to come back and rather live a life as a debased disgraced woman than spend eternity in there it's real you suspect it is real you know that what you do deserves death but you have not only continued to do it but also gathered for yourself more people to support you honey all of the bands of people that stand with you and even though they are going to be mourning but some are merely dead at your funeral will not be able to rescue you from where you are going to be when everybody is busy singing i'm going home i'm going home when you are not home you are not in heaven you will be in hell however there will be some pastor officiating over your funeral and talking about how it is that you're in heaven when you are obviously in hell one of the biggest reasons why i don't attend these worldly funerals Barbara, they lie about the people who died who die in sin and then next thing everybody out you're talking about how the dude is like within the presence of jesus yeah maybe being judged that's what's good because to be absent from the body is to be present with the lord but like for what purpose are you there are you there to be told depart from me work of iniquity or are you there to be told well done my good and faithful servant well my God is a worker of iniquity so there is no good thing that she can ever do outside of her body at this present moment she is better off just hanging around in this like nyam on earth she is safer there however at the rate she's going oh she's gonna have immediate regret i had a dream 
Night before last week, I was married to my cousin. She did a spell where it is that rather than naki lo nyala monna ka kibe happy and run into the sunset, ngampani kalo nyala yena. In spirit, kinyadi situ my cousin. I've been married to my cousin by some witch doctor that she consulted. Ngampani juanu kocho rehe. She's currently cheating on her husband with the, her spirit wife me. Kinto sa bari yezang mona. I've had a dream of one of my relatives and this cousin of mine, one of my other relatives, including this cousin, both of them having manhood in my dream trying to rape me they were in bed with me trying to rape me and i was like two women who had manhood in my dream they, they like that was in the very beginning of my sorrow so when i tell you that it, gender in the spirit realm does not matter that women literally grow manhood just to molest you in a dream in order to affect a strategy and there will also be marriages even though in waking life everybody in these streets is heterosexual everybody in this equation is heterosexual but in the dream there will be a lesbian contract conducted between you and another woman and in my dream i was married legally to my cousin no incest taken into consideration no fact that i'm not a lesbian and also in waking life there is a man that she is espoused espoused to is irrelevant is irrelevant she did a spell to marry me off to her in the spirit so that i can never be married to anybody else that's the level of evil that my cousin is involved in guys and women other women in order to block your sisters from getting their day in court la bañala in dreams you are raping them in dreams with manhood the way a man would rape a woman yeah i've seen stuff like that and it was not just my cousin and this other relative of mine that did this to me it was also some woman that does my hair that used to do my hair that i dreamt about her having manhood with the lady that used to do my nails that's when i discovered their witchcraft like rape and defile and both of them in my dreams i was like leave me alone basically chasing me around having manhood even though they're women that that's that's just keep that's witchcraft guys like it's so disgusting that's why kisama ba tlemo ba khatileng teng ke alora ke bona and tsotse ke di bona nna diang nyontsa diang nyontsa e so cousin given that in the spirit realm it appears as if though the only way that that contract can ever be severed is if you pass away right according to the scriptures uh what is this a woman cannot marry uh another man uh, without committing adultery if this man is still roaming these streets and so since onyad onyeti i guess the way that the lord is going to sever that contract is by killing you since you've made yourself my husband in the spirit have you not we gain some monarch give yourself to god so every contract you have entered into with the devil will be severed do you understand including that marriage that i have entered into with you in the spirit realm if you do not repent god is going to sever that union you you literally signed yourself off to death that was your death warrant that's what you god is not going to let me stay married to you that's yeah you're facing death unless you sever that contract like i said with the blood of jesus because you now no longer you now no longer have anything to do with us satan at this point redemption is your only way out gelzina coupled with the fact that i am a praying warrior so i mean really i feel as if though that little thing that we create i can just pray it away but at this point it is about the fact that god does not want me perpetually harassed by you and so you will deliver me from what you have commenced do you understand what tokafala you are dying you have literally signed your own death warrant and now that tokafala your family is going to listen to stuff like this but i'll get it saying it's a mighty but it's about one net but i'm going to long confront confront about the tricky bailing on youtube because what's about one can think for the jar they will know what they did to me for years letting you run these streets freely you are about to cause a devastating tragedy in the family through your own death you are about to cause so much discomfort because of how taboo it's going to be given that i will have predicted or prophesied it in advance this is all you have all you have is the very person you're trying to destroy girl all you have is me all you have is me and the way the truth and the life that i am offering you as an opportunity to turn to him because he is the only one that can rescue you from nonsense away gadiling the other dream i keep telling you on last night was of me just embracing tabario around in my life reduce hanging out like a subservient to you when i was the one on a balancos colonna li sirasi on a sajole raf raf momo strate on a sena reputation yeah i was the one that was the good girl that had the bright future now i will be at your beck and call serving you girl these dreams i'm waking up from are incredibly naive and the fact that you're trying to foster that as a reality in my life is going to get you killed god looks at me very particularly like mudi mwangata yo i'm poku bisa ka libitso we tsikeng tswa ka no nyoko stop the nonsense as for um my little sister ke lorile o monkile 
Omoyenze boss over me. I dreamt about you taking my baby sister and making her boss over me and making me grovel at her feet to a point of homongang. I can never get on now. I know what tell her. She's disrespectful. I can't stand her right now. And until she repents from that rubbish, we will never be restored in our relationship. I, however, do have a desire for a restored relationship. But the only way that that little girl can ever be restored to me is if she acknowledges what she did, put her tail between her legs, apologize to me, and acknowledge that she has been disrespectful. I am awarding her that amnesty because I recognize my mom has been irresponsible. She's like a child soldier that was trained rubbish. So I will take her back in. But as for you, you were given a shot, girl. And fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Khofedi le karun. Tabarun, you have turned your uncle family against me. You have sown so much discord. God can't stand that. Yeah, girl, your judgment is exhorbitant, man. Kau kai kena mulen zungla morana just only two tata ba yore. Ono ya kai. Learn the Lord's word and realize how much trouble you were in that you might develop a right level of reverence for God. Rata mudimu, omo tsabe, obono ra ampora huetsang. Obono ra ampora huetsang, rather than find out the hard way, ro oho etsang, given that azangwa repenta. The Lord hates those who sow discord between brothers. So right now you are loathed by a creator that made you every atom in your body. He made it and he hates you right now. You better give your life back, not back, you've never been in him. Just give your life to God. Scrub the dirt and the grime out of you and beg him to help you come out of this somewhat able to live in some kind of a semblance of a normal life. Oh, Oh, Otherwise, is a, is a widow maker. It is a widow maker. Wars on earth are called widow makers. What you have done right now, the thing that you have entered into is a widow war maker. Basadi, the thing that you are, this destruction that you are towards other women. Now it turns out that the war that you've entered into with other women is spiritual. And now you are widow war makers in that your husbands are about to be like left without wives, raising kids by themselves because their wives are so freaking evil. Just repent. I gotta go work out. You've been warned, cousin. Yanka tola torengwe kwe exposa mara. Kinda the middle of all of these exposés then they can bring her forward to the forefront one of these days of a lot of fall and so it's going to be all taboo that Kara was still speaking like this about her cousin Kota Minang Nanda but like I said I'm going about my father's business the harvest is plentiful though the laborers are few what are you doing working for Satan really good riddance if you die I'm not gonna miss you your family might other people might but it was good riddance you've been trying to do human sacrifices because of me you've been given grace there's so many lady Macbeths that are like you who have already killed the king you are the one lady Macbeth anyway outsiders I shame but not drop it like dominoes because they didn't have a car standing in the gap and accept your nonsense like Jacob take the limp run with it rather than face God and see just how much he hates those who sow discord you've been warned I'm standing out in Christ's name Cranky bye